have honest, real, raw, true conversation and prayer with God. You go down into the water, and when you do, the old person dies. You come up out of the water as a new creation of Jesus Christ. Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now is a great time to grab your weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already because the service starts in 90 seconds. I'm here to tell you today that God wants to set you free. Oh yeah. He wants to set you free. with him grow in your walk with him get closer to him spend more time with him because he's better if you want your life to get better then get around the one who is better get around Jesus get around the one who has power to change and transform your life get around the one who has the perfect grace for you and the perfect love for you and the perfect joy for your soul listen he is better
Welcome CE family. I can't wait to see how God is going to work through today's service. When you are in the service, if you have some questions, comments, or prayer requests, go to churchexperience.tv slash connect, or pull out your camera app and scan our QR code. Or if you always want to stay connected with us at CE, just hit that subscribe button down below. We would love to hear from you, get back to you, and be praying for you. CE family, we are ready to jump into today's service. Would you stand with me as we spend some time worshiping Jesus by singing to him? surrounding me let it break let your name still come the sea to still the rage in me to still every way let your name Jesus Jesus you made the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus Jesus, Jesus, you made the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, call these bones to live, call these bones to sing.
leaning on the God of Jacob, whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of
Heavenly Father, we come to you with praise and thanksgiving, Lord. We're so thankful for what you do for us. We're so thankful for who you are, who you promise that you will always will be, and that you never change, Lord. You are our firm foundation. We can stand firm on what your word says, and we thank you, and we praise you for that. Father God, prepare our hearts to come to know you more, to come into relationship with you more. We thank you and we praise you, and it's in your holy name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's give God a big hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. We want to definitely keep all those announcements in mind. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We magnify you. We adore you. We say that there is nobody like you. We say your name reigns supreme. Have your way in this place. We come to encounter your presence. He'll deliver and set free in this room. And we'll forever give you all the glory honor and the praise. It's in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Everybody shout amen. amen. Just look at your neighbor and say, it's so good, glad to, good to see you. Come on, they didn't say anything back to you. Say, Look at somebody else and say, it's so good to see you. <laughs> awesome, awesome, awesome. I'm so excited about what God is going to do on this morning. If you're just excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning, give God another big hand clap of praise. Yes, Lord. If you have your Bibles, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 6. Genesis chapter 6. And the title of this message is Just Do It. Just do it. Just do it. Just do it. We're in our end game series. We're in a new series um, for this year. Many times we say at the beginning of every year, um, I'm about to, I'm going to do. But God has given us instructions that we must follow through. And it's going to take faith in order to be able to fulfill the assignment that he has for us. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 13 reads, I'm going to start at verse 12. It says, I'm reading the New International Version. It says, God saw how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on the earth had corrupted their ways. So God said to Noah, I am going to put and into all people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both of them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is 300 cubits long, thy cubits wide, and 50 cubits wide and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below, and a roof opening one cubit high and all around. Put a door inside of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all the life under heavens and every creature that has breath of life in it, everything on earth will perish. But I will establish my covenant with you. He was talking to Noah and his family. 
and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your sons' wives, bring them with you. You are to bring the ark, two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. The title of this message is Just Do It. Just do it. We are living in perilous times. We, I believe that we're, we're, li we're living in the, the last days. Everybody shout last days. It is not just a comfort. It's imperative that we obey the instructions that the Lord has given in this, in this passage, God gave Noah an instruction to build the ark. Why was this done? It was to protect his family. The assignment that God has given us, how do we know something is a God-sized assignment? It's, it's because it's bigger than just you. It is something that will enhance your family. It's not just self-serving. Uh, we are a blessing to be a blessing. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the, in, it, the assignment is that God has given, for, gave for Noah was generational. And his obedience was able to preserve a, a generation. How we, what we allow, the next generation will walk fully into. That is important. That's why it's important that we have faith in God. Just imagine if Noah would have become fearful and disobeyed the assignment that was given to him. Many of us have experienced a, 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 extensive tests uh, and extensive trials uh, and some of us feel like even at the beginning of the year like you want to give up but you have to keep the end game in mind uh, that it's bigger than just you look at your neighbor and say it's bigger than you come on look at your neighbor and say I won't let you quit <laughs> we're just in the first uh, quarter of this year and God is raising up in this church a kingdom teammates that is going to be able to build an ark for when floods take place. To be able to, to build this church, this, this body of believers is a refuge. Come on here. In his presence is a refuge. You will never go wrong obeying God. I can, I, I can preach that one point all day long and pass the mic on it. You can never go wrong uh, obeying God. <sighs> I, I hear in just many conversations, can you believe this happened? How many have heard it just in, in, a, in a, when you're talking to someone, can you believe this is going on in our, our world? Some people may say that or what in the world is going on? Or they're saying something like this. Can you believe this is happening? And my response to them is, yes, I can believe <laughs> this is happening. The, the Bible gives uh, instructions uh, for life. He, the Bible has shared uh, everything that, that's going to take place uh, in our world today. Uh, and he has, the Lord has given us instructions uh, about how to handle those, those life Pressures. The Bible says we're in this world, but we're not of this world. So that means when life tests and trials come, we, we should act, um, act um, bogged down by the, the stress and concerns of life. But we should exercise our, our faith knowing that we have a God that will respond to our prayers. So, Noah. A decision he had to make. Either obey 
Okay. There are going to be times when we have to exercise our faith. Not everything is going to be an easy decision. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. How many want to please God? The Bible says, God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. So anytime uh, that you are experiencing uh, the um, uh, the spirit of fear, that is not coming from God. Now is the time ever before to exercise our faith. <clears throat> Noah was able to save his family. Noah was able to save a generation because he, he obeyed. Says Genesis 6, he says, I'm going to make a covenant with you. Deal the ark, not buy the ark. Deal. Everybody say deal. deal. Everybody loves a buying process, but no one loves, very few love the building process. We're living in a consumer based society where we can we, we want what we want, but very few are very are willing to give. Are you willing to put the time? Are you willing to put the dedication? Are you willing to put the commitment to build the ark? Because your family and a generation is depending on your obedience. It says, go into the ark and bring your family. How many have some family members that need to be saved? That you believe in God for them to be saved? I believe God is going to use many of us that we can be able to witness to our, our families. God's going to give you a word. God's going to give you instructions for troubling times. The ark. The ark is that place of of safety. It says Noah did what the Lord commanded. He built the ark. It says Noah was 600 years old when the flood waters came on the earth and Noah and his sons <laughs> and his wife and his sons wife entered the ark to escape the flood. How many have felt like you have experienced some flood in this? <laughs> Woo! You're still here. You survive what, what, what damaged others. Because of your faith, because of your trust in God, that was the ark. That was the thing that that kept you. Your faith, your trust in God. Your family. Make a commitment to prioritize his presence this year. Many times we talk about what goes on in the school system. You know, hey, they took prayer out of school. We say stuff like that. But it's prayer in your home. It's quiet in your home. Yeah, but the public library is quiet. It's prayer in your home. It's, a, it's the only time you pray over a 30 second meal. Many times we put the responsibility of our relationship with the Lord in other people's homes and then complain about 
how society. Okay, all right, all right. But this year, God is saying, make a focus to prioritize my presence. It's the only time you worship on Sunday morning. <laughs> Is the only time you raise a hallelujah and, 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 and see a victory and, and wave your hands in the battle on Sunday mornings. This is something that we should have a lifestyle of. Many times, we, God wants to change the heart. Everybody say, change my house. Because so many times, there's so many people that come to church and you feel good at church. You get your word at church. You feel good. And then you go home. And as soon as you get home, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that battle comes. But the culture that's at the church, that same spirit that's at the church, you can take to the house. God wants to shift the, the culture of your house. Yes, he does. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. Come on, here. as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. No matter what times we may, may be facing, we won't experience that flood. There's a hedge of protection around you. Come on, somebody. When you exercise your faith and obey the instructions of the Lord. No matter what the enemy may try to throw at you, obey the Lord's instructions fully. You won't go under. You won't drown. What was over your head is about to be under your feet. That flood season is coming to an end. God is giving an ark. God is giving a, a safe place. Get in the ark. Get in the yard, get in the yard, get in the yard, get in the yard. He said it's going to rain 40 days and 40 nights. Whew. It rained from the ground. It rained above. And they were able to survive. Not only were they able to survive, but they were able to thrive in the midst of the flood. We're still reading about Noah this day because of his obedience. They started off. I'll come out here at ground level, but at the, by the end of the storm, they started off at ground level. But by the end of the storm. It ushered them to a higher place. <laughs> it ushered them to a mountain. So you had to look up the, the mountains used to be in your way. Now you have to be able to sit on top of your mountains. So never again complain about your flood. God is going to give you strategies for the flood. <laughs> your recession proof. God is sending abundance, come on here, for every good work. God is pouring out fresh vision. The Bible says life and death, come on here, lies in the power of, the, of your tongue. So even while you're experiencing some of these hard times, watch what you say because it will affect what you see. Woo! Watch what you say. You could either be speaking a funeral or you could be speaking a festival when you open up your mouth. The flood season is over. 
You're getting ready to rise up and be on top of the mountain. Everybody say, I'm about to take my mountain. Come on, no, y'all didn't say it. Say, I'm about to take my mountain. <laughs> there are seven mountains. Yes, Lord. Seven mountains. You guys have heard me teach on it. The seven mountains that shift the culture. Education, religion, family, business, government and military, arts and entertainment, and media. I'll say that one more time for those who are taking notes. Education, religion, family, business, government and military, arts and entertainment, and media. I believe God is raising up Noahs that are going to invade these seven mountains. Many times as a church, we just focus on the religion mountain while the world handles our rest. And then we complain about the society that we live in and get mad. But God is going to raise up the people that have a Noah-like anointing that are going to be able to invade education, that are going to be able to provide arcs in the education system, that are going to infiltrate media. How many have seen so much trash on social media, on television? God is going to give us a creative anointing. That you can be able to invade TikTok. That you can be able to invade social media. That, that, that we're going to be able to make Jesus go viral. Yeah. We're going to make Jesus famous. Because our, our kids don't like it. Why, why complain about famous uh, cartoon entertainment companies that are doing crazy stuff? Yes, it's trash. God wants to raise up the developers <laughs> that will spread Christian content. Ooh, it's quiet in this room. Yeah, I feel, I feel resistance. But God is going to God. God's going, God wants to use you and I, but we have to move out of our box and obey so we won't be flooded. He's giving strategies. He's giving strategies to be able to infiltrate business. He'll give you wisdom to obtain wealth. Okay. All right. How many want to be wealthy? Okay, it's quiet. <laughs> Some of us need we need wealth to be able to push the push movement and mission forward in advance uh, to advance the kingdom of God. To be able to help out others. To be able to, to change and shift cities. And that means we have to obey the instruction that the Lord has given us. To be able to invade government. We need righteous city officials. We need righteous state officials. In all branches, all levels of branches. God is, wants to raise us up. To not just be in the background, but to stand out completely. Just do it. You've been talking about stuff for years. What has the Lord given you passion for? You've been saying you're going to write that book for the past 10 years. You've been saying you're going to start that program for the last 10 years. You've been saying uh, you're going to start that business, you're going to get that degree, you're going to have that skill. Just do it. If God be for you, uh, he's more than the world against you. It's not just for you. It's for a generation that's come on. You, you could be setting uh, your kids, 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 kids up. 
There's a generational blessing uh, that's attached to your obedience. Woo! It's not going to go under. This year, we ain't going under. Come on, just, just look at your neighbor and say, we're not going under this year. Come on, as for me and my house, come on here. You just need to learn how, how to speak over your life, speak over your family, speak over everything that was connected, that's connected to you, and say, we're not going under. Because of Noah's obedience, everything that was connected to him was able to win. That's the end game. We want to see the people that we love make it easy. We want to see the people that we love walk, love God, walk into their purpose, walk into their assignment. We don't want to see people go to hell. Okay. All right. Some of y'all got scared when I said that. We don't want to see people go to hell. We want to see unbelievers get saved. We want to see people accept the life of Jesus Christ. That's why we are here to spread the gospel into every sector of society. If you believe that, shout amen. amen. That's the only reason that we are here. And sometimes the assignment is not going to be pretty. It's going to require something I call sweat equity. The building isn't fun. But you can't give up. You got to do it, no matter what, no matter the tough times of the preaching gospel, in season and out of season. Pastor, I don't feel like coming to church this morning. You better come anyway. You just do it. I don't feel like giving it up. Just, just do it <laughs> because it's bigger than my feelings. That's the way that we see victory, is when we fully obey the assignment of God. That's the end game. We want to hear God say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. <laughs> You've been faithful over a few things. We don't want the Lord to cast us away. <laughs> How many want to be found faithful? <laughs> it's going to require some consistency. But that always going to feel like it. I keep stressing that because I'm going to keep saying it. <laughs> that always going to feel like it. We're going to press past our feelings this year. We're going to press. Come on here. Sometimes you might not feel like you're always worshiping or, worshiping or praising. But when you remember what God, Jesus did on that cross, something came you all the well up. That's your why. That's, that's your why. Because he took nails to his hand. Because he took nails to his feet. Because he was mocked. For you and I. <laughs> Why we should lay our, lay our lives down as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him. That's our reasonable service. Just do it. Just do it. Let's clap our hands and give God praise right there. <laughs> We almost got one month down this for this year. This year already flies by. Don't let us go all the way until the end of December and say it, and, and you not accomplish what the Lord has placed on your heart at the beginning. What are you doing to press towards your goals? What are you doing to advance that aside? Some of you guys are so full. You're, you're, you're pregnant with potential, pregnant with power. Pregnant with assignment. I feel like, man, some of you guys are getting ready to bust open. Release it. <laughs> Release that pressure. 
Some of you guys can't sleep because you got assignments and dreams and, and ambitions and goals that's on your mind that God has given you. That is the Lord. <laughs> and it's to help people. This is your confirmation. This is your sign. <laughs> Just do it. It's, oh, I don't care how small it is. I don't care if it's blessing somebody with a bottle of water every day. I don't care what it is. Just do it. Do what the Lord has told you. Clap your hands and give God praise. <laughs> On this Tuesday night, everybody bring a notebook and a magazine. Pick up a, pick up a notebook and a magazine. I'm going to try Ginger. Uh, let's help me if you, you, you can find some magazines. Y'all yeah, got some magazines at the house. And I want you to just bring, we're going to do some vision boards. And we're going to talk about our vision for, uh, for 2023. Our corporate vision and our individual calls, our individual visions. As the church goes forward, your family's going to go forward. And you're going to see even the young people in this room, y'all bring something as well. If your dream is to become a race car driver, we'll come up, we're going to find a way to get you a, a toy race car or something. We're going to, I'm serious. Y'all bring that on Tuesday night. I promise y'all, it's going to be, we're going to pray over these visions. Y'all should have shouted right there. Y'all won't see division. You're going to see multiplication. <laughs> the animals came in two by two. I wish I could have used the whole lot longer. <laughs> two by two. Two of every kind. Multiplication is being extended for your side. Multiplication is being added to your vision. You're not going to flood with you. I didn't say the rain would come. <laughs> I didn't say the weapon would fall. But the word of the Lord, the weapon may fall. But it won't prosper. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we can just lift our hands. We worship you. We thank you for everything that you're doing in this place. Let courageous faith rise in this room. Give us strength for the assignment. Give us strength for the journey. Father, we trust you even now. Even in the midst of the rain. Even in the midst of crazy floods and crazy seasons. God, we trust you this year. We dedicate, not this is year to you, we dedicate our lives to you. We dedicate our lives to you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Before our usher team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here's a few important things happening with our CE family. Actively serving not only brings us closer to God, but helps us fulfill our purpose by making a real life difference in others' lives. Through serving at Church Experience, you'll use the unique ways that God has gifted you to help create welcoming environments where He can change lives. There are many opportunities to serve, including music and arts, kid experience, student experience, frontline, life groups, outreaches and causes, and operations. To find out more, check the Serving Teams bubble on the back of your response card and a CE leader will reach out with all the details. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and receive our tithes and offerings, we strive to see regular and consistent stories of life transformation in Christ. Ongoing impact requires consistent prayers, efforts, and financial investment. When you establish an online weekly recurring gift, you are partnering with your church to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ every week. Visit the gift page of our CE website or our app and quickly set up an automatically recurring gift 
that will have a consistent impact in many lives. Thank you for your faithfulness to God through CE. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ. today's impacting service. You may have personally made a commitment during the service, and if you did, please reach out to us. Also, if you have any questions, comments, prayer requests, go to churchexperience.tv slash connect or scan the QR code on the screen. I personally love staying connected by staying up to date on the CE social media on Instagram, Facebook, our website, or even our app. It's been great to share another special service with our CE family. I look forward to seeing you again next week. Have a great week.